I'm going to explain to you now what happened in Texas, why people are so terrified from what that can happen in Florida and in South America, and why people are so terrified from crazy prophecies before Rosh Hashanah, end of September, and all of craziness that people are going through in their lives. Why all of those judgments are coming right now? Because that those are days of Elul, those are days of Shuba. And we are so close to the end, if you will um, refresh your memory a little bit to look at last year, on one year before, the last three, four, five years, Every time before of Rosh Hashanah, there were crazy, crazy judgments, crazy judgments, crazy situations, and especially Hasid Breslev experienced those things before of Rosh Hashanah, that Rabbeinu Rabbi Nachman said, I received the Rosh Hashanah as a gift from Hashem in Barach, and he's in charge on Rosh Hashanah, and there is something very unique that happens every year in Uman in Rosh Hashanah, that Rabbeinu commanded and, and asked all of his loyal students, everyone that listens to him, to make it and to come to Rosh Hashanah. And Rabbeinu is building fantastic buildings with those holy souls that are coming. And something very special happens every year in Rosh Hashanah. So especially in the last five years before of Rosh Hashanah, something like five years, we can see every month before of Rosh Hashanah that there are threats on our nation and on the wide world. And, and Jewish communities in Houston, Texas, it's a very big Jewish community over there. And also in Florida, in, in, in South Florida, in, the, in Miami, very big, huge Jewish community. And all of those judgments that Hashem Barach is putting on us, all of that threat, all of that fear, is coming only for one thing, to wake us up to do tshuva. Now, again, again, relax. <laughs> you need to understand again, over and over, what it means to do tshuva. To do tshuva is not to die. To do tshuva is not to suffer. To do tshuva is not to hang yourself on the ceiling. To do tshuva, it's not to not to sleep at night and to be awake all day long. It's, no, that's not tshuva. Those are other things. When you have a beard, so you are growing your beard. When you cover your head, so you have a head cover. Everything you do is amazing. Tshuva is one mitzvah out of 613 mitzvot. And a person needs to do tshuva in the days of Elul. So to do tshuva, it doesn't mean to put filin. You can put filin. It's not bad. You can keep Shabbat. It's not bad. It's great. Keep Shabbat. <laughs> But the month of Elul is the month of Tshuva. You need to set your mind into doing Tshuva. Now the question is, what is Tshuva? Great, wonderful. Let's discuss that. Let's talk about the real meaning of Elul, of the month of Tshuva. So, Rabbi Nachman and also other righteous people explained to us, they opened the word Elul. Elul, you write Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. In the Holy Language, you write Aleph and then Lamed, Vav and then Lamed. Great! So, two things I want to tell you about the month of Elul. First of all, the first interpretation, what the Rabbi Nachman and also other righteous people mentioned that in their books, in their amazing Torah that they said. They said to us that the month of Elul is representing the verse Ani le dodi ve dodi li, that the nation of Israel is preparing itself to get married with her so called uncle. It's not a real uncle, like a family member uncle. It means the one that she loves. That's how the old ancient language was using the word uncle to describe. Her, the one that she loves, the one that she yearns to get married with. So, first of all, that uncle is Hashem Barach, is the Creator Himself. And the Holy Nation is about to marry Him. So, the Tshuva 
that month of tshuva receives now that light of love. Because we're talking about a wedding. So all of that connection of doing tshuva and coming closer to Hashem is through those glasses of building a relationship, communication, making peace, shalom bayit between the couple, trying to have conversations, and that's how you do tshuva. It's just a temporary world that in this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.